terror travels by the skies. He should look at the new Boss Fight Studio of Vitruvian Hacks, highly articulated character kit system, the Fairy Warrior Winged Terror. Another of the species of fairies that have crossed over to this realm. The difference with this group is that they did not come to seek a new home. They arrived en masse when contacted by Lacuna of the Cavern Fairies. Hundreds of warriors were included as an expeditionary force in response to a request for aid. The warriors can change their size and mass at will, shrinking their bodies and equipment down to insect size when they need to infiltrate an enemy stronghold and return to full size when they need to take their opponents face to face. Their shields are the carapaces of a species of insect native to their dimension. The skin of a steel beetle can deflect magical attacks, making their shields prized by humans and elves alike. You know, as a side note, I'm always really interested by these summary read-ups I read on the back of the packaging. Boss Fight really engulf an entire story behind the scenes of these characters long before you actually take them out of their plastic prisons. With that being said, let's go ahead now and grab the tape measure just to see how tall the Fairy Warrior stands. And while I'm doing this, I'd like to thank the folks over at Boss Fight Studio that did provide the sample we're about to have a look at in this video. The figure stands about three and three quarters of an inch. That's 3.75 inches, if you would be curious. And to spin that around, you're looking at the Fairy Warrior standing about nine centimeters in height. The Fairy Warrior BTW also is the third figure that we've looked at from this new line of Vitruvian hacks. To bring in the other ones, we've already had a look at a much larger figure. Here's what the Fairy Warrior looks like next to the Knight of Accord. We can also bring in an equally tall figure. This would have been Queen Solan, but as you can already see, I've stuck with the idea of displaying it with the warrior helmet instead. It was just way too cool to leave off. For the figure's accessories, the first thing we'll have a look at for the Fairy Warrior is the Vitruvian Hacks display stand here, all cast in black plastic. It so happens to be the same type of display stand, yes, as the other stands that we've gotten already from the other two figures we've looked at prior. I'll move those to the side. By the way, there is also pegs on the top here that can attach to the underside of the figure's feet. Once again, it did involve me having to dowel, twisting the plastic of the peg to eventually get rooted into the underside of the figure's feet. Putting the figure down right there. We're going to move the stand off to the side for the time being. Sad news, I have to report is during the time of moving all the accessories over, I did happen to lose one of the hands. Of course, it had to drop onto the floor and I wasn't even looking to where the hand actually fell to. I don't know the whereabouts of the other fairy warrior's hand, but just imagine it would look like this and then mirror flip to the other side. Biscuits. I'm gonna put that to the side. This, by the way, you can swap out with the figure's hands, but once again, I usually like to display the Vitruvian hack figures usually with gripping hands, that when I'm displaying the figures that down the road, especially the, for the fact of the other two things that we're about to have a look at, I think it's more crucial to have the figures with gripping hands, which the figure does have currently. One thing it does come included with as well is a really gnarly looking weapon. It looks like the front, I think, of a stag beetle. It's been nicely painted here with an off purple color with a little tint of almost a greenish color brushed along the top. I really like the color that they went with, not only for the weapon that it wields, but also the color scheme for the rest of the fairy as well. Now this does fit into her hands, simply just pl plug it into the hands. I mean, the hands are soft enough plastic already that you can easily move the hands away from the palm and you can go ahead and put the stag beetle weapon in her hand, probably for close contact. The figure also comes included with the shell. Now, I believe this is the steel beetle, to be correct. It's the shell shield that they use that, of course, the humans, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, the humans and the elves are both quite interested in. Uh, it wields the same way as any other shield. There's a little handle on the inside of it. You'll notice there's a big long peg. That's also for another purpose for it. But you can also take the shield, bending the elbow, bending the elbow. There we go. And then we can go ahead. Oh, I just dropped. I'm going to have to go and pick that up. At least I knew where that fell, unlike the other hand. And then once again, we're just going to pry the fingers slightly away. I mean, you don't have to try too hard to pry those fingers away. 
and then the shield sits in her hand. The reasoning why this peg is also here too is if you flip the figure around and you look to the back, you'll notice there's three holes, kind of look like an owl face. Holes off to the side are for the wings that we're about to have a look at, and then there's a hole right in the middle. You can then take the shield and twist it in there. Now, I don't have it in completely all the way, but you can see like it does serve as sort of a serviceable backpack. This would be likely something that would open up to revealing the wings inside. Let's go ahead and put that to the side before we drop that. <laughs> oh boy, dropping a lot of things here. The other thing the figure comes included with before we get a look at the alternate head sculpt is, of course, a pair of wings. I do like the way that the wings are handled here. The colors, I think, go well with the purple, that off purplish blue color scheme for the majority of its body. It sort of has more of a purplish tint to the bottom and gets more clear as it gets progressively down to the bottom. I really like the detailing that they've done to these wings. Uh, they do peg into the back, so what we'll, again, we're going to do is spin around to the back. And those smaller holes we've already discussed, you just take the wings and plug them into that. Now, it may involve, again, a little bit of twisting and turning before you eventually get the wings in there. And you can do the exact same thing on the other side, too. This is something that is a continued trend with all the Vitruvian hacks we've looked at so far. They give you two ways of technically displaying the figure, and there's all those little happy mediums in the middle. I mean, you could, of course, display the figure with the wings like this. And I think for that, I would almost be more inclined to display it with the alternate head sculpt. And then I think with a backpack like this, I would probably be sticking with this head sculpt sort of being a drone, the rest of the army. I'm going to leave these off just for the time being. I'm going to put those to the side. We already know what the wings look like after all, just so it allows me to get a little bit closer to show you guys what the head sculpt looks like. What a pretty, pretty cool looking head. The head brings in a little bit of gold that doesn't seem anywhere else on the rest of the figure. Most of the figure's body's color is sort of a metallic bluish purple. And the colors work really well here. You got little accents there of green there on the bracelets, the bands on the arm, and again around the leafy skirt that it carries around with it as well. It also has a few little leaves placed on the top of its torso too. There seems to be also these little canisters on the side. I'm guessing they're probably like little, little fruits or something like that. They per perhaps even could be little dropping bombs as the fairies fly by. I like that those have been painted in yellow there as well. But the majority of the body really is that metallic bluish purple. And it works really, really well. But I like the way that they've added the gold. It's not too intrusive, really. The gold works quite well with the colors that we've already discussed. That's a nice detailing done to both the antennas, the larger sized eyes. I can't tell whether this is the actual face of the fairy warrior or if it's a helmet that it wears over top of its head. As mentioned, it does have an alternate head sculpt here which is pretty easy. In fact, all of these Vitruvian hacks we've looked at, my worry of removing things didn't seem to be that long because once I started popping out the heads, it seemed like it was very easy to do so. And again, we can just pop that in place to show you once again the difference, just in case you already forgot. Yeah, I mean, would it be safe to say that that's maybe a helmet that's over top of its face and that's not its true face? You can let me know down below in the comment section. This one blends better the color scheme. You've got now the lower open mouth visible, and that blends again with the colors of the rest of the body. For this one, I think I'd probably be again more inclined to pull back and well, bring back those wings. And again, just attach them onto the back of the torso. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to keep them permanently there because we're going to look at the figure's articulation in a few moments. But I definitely, I think, would be displaying the fairy warrior this head sculpt wise with maybe the wings instead attached on her back and then have the shield in her hand instead. For the articulation here on the Fairy Warrior, we're gonna start things off first with a head sculpt that does rotate all the way around on the ball joint we just finished having a look at. Head does look down quite a lot. You can have the head looking up about that much. Not that they come included with flight stands, although it would be kind of cool to see boss fight include flight stands for characters like this that are bound for flight. But yeah, the head does rotate pretty easily. No problems whatsoever, or even rock it back and forth. Shoulders come out, no problems either there. You can take the arms and again, rotate them all the way around. The pin or hinge in the elbow also allows the forearm to rotate back and forth. You can also take the hand and rotate that also all the way around. Even though like this is an overlay over top of the existing body, they're probably gonna be using a lot of the bodies underneath here for other figures and they're simply just taking overlays of plastic representing like the armor and stuff that these characters wear. So like there's an upper torso ball joint there's a lower torso waist swivel. You can take the legs and split them out. You can bring the legs forward and back. 
And underneath the skirting here, you can see about three quarters of the way up the thigh, there's a swivel cut. You can swivel that back and forth. Figure has a double hinge on the knee. Figure has also articulation here in the feet, and you can also rock them back and forth as well. So don't let the size really fool you. The Fairy Warrior is just an impressive looking figure that's got some pretty cool articulation going for it. And again, the, the thing I really like about this line is that there's so many different ways to mix and match these figures. I mean, even just to go back and look at the Beetle Shield, you can either even have it as a shield or again, you can attach it on the back of the torso. I think for this specific look right here of the Fairy Warrior, I would think I'm more leaning to the idea of displaying it with the wings and having the beetle shield as a shield for defensive and weapon purposes more so. I like the idea that they would have included that. And then again, that little stag weapon. I'm going to have to retrieve that. At least I can see it's on the floor right now. Unlike the poor hand that went missing. I'm going to have to definitely see if I can find that. If you were to remember how we started this review and how now we're wrapping things up here on the rotisserie, you would swear that we were looking at two completely different figures. Just the way I've mixed and matched the things that come included with it by adding now the new wings on the back of its torso and by swapping out the head sculpt, it looks like we're looking at a completely different figure than what we began with. And again, I like the thing about that with the Vitruvian hacks and the hero hacks that Boss Fight Studio put out. More so, I think, the Vitruvian hacks because they're more about the idea of swapping parts in and out that come included with the figure. That when you can start a figure looking one way and have it change completely by the end, that goes to show how much customization there is available. Still, I like the idea of having the helmet with the big bug eyes but still liking the look of this one and i think i'm going to stick with having it displayed like this on my shelf for at least the time being and as you can see the shield shell the shell shield i've got currently in her hand but again you can put that on the back of her torso you can't do both though you have to commit to one you have to either have the wings or you have to have the shell on the back of her torso you can't have both but again, I like the idea of having the figures so customizable as they are. The figure's got some great coloring going for some decent sculpting as well. And considering really that all of the body underneath would be something that carries across the board with other the female figures, it goes to show how much extra sculpting that they put into the pieces that overlay over top of those bodies. Couple that with the additional coloring that this one does bring to the table, that nice metallic purplish blue. It's a really, really nice looking figure. Uh, I think I might even say that this is so far one of my favorite figures that we've looked at so far. I know it kind of competes a bit with Queen Solan, kind of the way I ended up having her displayed. We'll see how things go when we have a look at Thano. No, not, not Thanos. Thano. S-T-H-E-N-O. I think it's pronounced Thano. Uh, we will be looking at her. She's the falling necromancer. Kind of looks a bit like Medusa. Again, a big thank you to the folks over at Boss Fight Studio that once again did provide the sample of the fairy warrior that we could have a look at in this video. Perhaps let me know down below in the comments section, based on what we had to look at here for this figure, which direction would you go? Would you go the idea of displaying it with the big bug-eyed helmet? Or would you display it with this unhelmeted head sculpt with the wings on the back? Let me know down below. If you like this video, wanna hit it with a like. If you're loving the content you're seeing and certainly wanna stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell notification so you're going to get reminders all the time, every time, of when a new video po puts up. And also, if you're checking out or wanted to check out more from Boss Fight Studio, check out my playlist that will be popping up in a few moments, right around the time that this video is going to be wrapping up. It's definitely going to be a lot more videos coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.